Hello. In this video, I want to show you how to combine and analyze two hashtag networks with uh, the help of Gephi. So first of all, what is a hashtag network? Um, a hashtag network uh, is something that comes out of co-hashtag analysis, and it's a relatively simple way to get an idea of um, semantic structures in kind of hashtag-based uh, online platforms, uh, in particular, you know, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and so forth. So the basic idea of co-hashtag analysis is to say, all right, um, we're going to, you know, assemble a data set of, you know, relevant tweets, well, images, and so forth. And we're going to say, okay, if two hashtags appear in the same tweet or, you know, tag the same, the same image, media file, or uh, whatever, then we're going to consider them connected. And by looking at a whole data set um, in terms of these connections, we can see, you know, which kind of subjects relate to which other subjects uh, and so forth. So what we do kind of very often is, um, you know, take a query um, to Twitter or uh, some other platform, then, you know, download all the tweets and then look at the relationships. But in uh, many cases it can be very interesting to actually not work with just a single of these networks, but um, several. And in this video, I want to show you how to do that uh, with uh, with the help of Gephi and and what you can get from um, from this. So um, what I'm going to be doing is um, I'm going to be using two hashtag uh, networks, um, co-hashtag networks from uh, uh, Instagram, uh, and I used the the Instagram hashtag explorer uh, for this. And what I basically did is um, I searched um, for two different tags um, and uh, uh, retrieved in uh, both cases uh, roughly a thousand media. And this is what I am going to use as a, as a basis. So I've already prepared my uh, my files here. And um, those are my two uh, uh, networks. One has um, um, been assembled with the, the search query uh, Gamergate. So uh, that means it retrieved um, roughly a thousand media from Instagram tagged uh, Gamergate. Um, and uh, the second one is, well, roughly the same amount of media tagged with uh, the hashtag social justice. So the idea here is to see a little bit how um, these two subject matters uh, uh, relate. And um, this is what we're going to do now. So I'm going to Gephi, which is the you know, graph uh, visualization and analysis uh, a toolkit we're going to use for, uh, for this quick um, uh, exercise. And I'm just uh, going to you know, open, uh, um, oh, I'm already here, one of those networks first. Right, Gamergate, um, we're going to choose an undirected uh, uh, graph because ultimately, you know, it's it's about co-appearing. There's not really um, any kind of directionality. And what's already interesting is to see that um, um, actually with only a thousand media, we have 2,500 different uh, hashtags. So we'll definitely have to do um, some filtering. So I'm just going to open this one. Okay, here it is. Um, and then I am going to open the second one. Social justice, and again I select undirected, and here, and this is kind of crucial, I now actually want to combine those two networks, right? So I am going to select a pent graph instead of uh, of a new graph. So, okay, now we have um, the combined network, but there's actually a quite important problem, and and this is something we really have to uh, take into account. If you look at the variables that exist uh, inside of um, uh, this now combined networks, you can see degree, which kind of designates for each node how many other nodes it is connected with, and the variable count. And the variable count really comes from uh, the Internet Hashtag Explorer, which basically gives you the number of times each of those hashtags uh, uh, appear in that uh, co-hashtag network. But the problem now is that we actually um, combined two networks and um, some of the nodes in those two networks are actually going to be the same. So uh, what Gephi does, um, well, unfortunately, is that um, when you do that, um, 
the second network you import is actually going to define the value that appears in count. So what do I mean? If, for example, in our first network, we have a variable that had count, I don't know, 100, um, and then we open a second network, and then we have the same node, but suddenly it only has a count of 10, it will not kind of add these counts. It's going to simply overwrite um, the, the first count with the second count. So this is a problem, but this really means that we cannot use the variable count at all here. What I'm going to do uh, to deal with that a little bit is I'm going to apply a kind of a small trick. And this is I'm going to calculate for each node um, the average degree. And in particular, the average weighted degree. I'm going to just start that. Um, the weighted degree, so I, I just told you, you know, degree is the number of nodes one node is connected with. And the weighted degree is, well, let's say um, a node is... Um, connected to another node um, with a tie strength of 2. Um, and that would mean it has a degree of 1, but it has a weighted degree of 2. So weighted degree take, takes into account um, the number of times uh, a, uh, a node is connected to another one. And that actually is a pretty good stand-in uh, for the count, uh, the count value. So now that I've calculated weighted degree here on the right, right, that's what I did here. It shows up as a variable here on the left side. And this is actually what I'm going to use now, um, in particular for uh, sizing um, my notes here. OK, so now you can already see. Oh, here are yeah, two kind of big notes. Um, to facilitate working with this network, I'm going to um, actually uh, turn off the, um, the links, which makes the whole process uh, much further. So now we could just simply, you know, kind of uh, spatialize this network and, you know, have a look at the combined network. But I want to show you a technique that allows us to get a bit an idea of what you could call the semantic continuum between our two, uh, two networks. Um, and what I'm going to do for this is I'm actually going to take the two main hashtags from the data set. Um, those two hashtags were certainly um, on the one side social justice and on the other side, uh, Gamergate. And um, well, I can already see uh, that you know, it's, it's, it's going to be these two. And instead of kind of just uh, spatializing the network, I'm actually going to drag those two out here. So I'm going to place those two here. Let's zoom out maybe a little bit. I'm going to space this out. And the idea is actually that now, not only I'm going to drag in them here, but I'm going to um, tell Gephi to not um, to not use those two nodes when it comes to specializations. I'm actually gonna tell Gephi to 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 keep them in place. I'm gonna right click on here and then get, say settle. I'm gonna do the same one for the other, and I'm just gonna start specializing here using the uh, trusted force atlas two algorithm. Oh, let's put that put that up here, and just um, you know. Start, uh, start running that. And what you can see, what's happening here, it's actually, so now my two tags here, they stay in place, and all of the other nodes, they spatialize around it. So the result is going to be that the, um, the tags that are very strongly related or only related to one of those two um, um, uh, hashtags are going to be very closely, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, placed to it. So you can see all of those things here around the left, this left uh, um, node here, um, are definitely hashtags that only appear um, in relation to, well, whatever this one is. Um, and here the same. More interesting though, is we're going to have a couple of, uh, quite a bunch of hashtags here in the middle um, that actually are um, now hashtags that are shared. And, and here what we're going to see is uh, uh, this kind of semantic continuum that, that um, is going to appear that I just uh, talked about. And I think it's going to become a bit clearer once I, um, I, I start looking at this more closely. So I'm um, going to here select uh, prevent overlap to have um, a specialization, you know, kind of come to a, to a close here and uh, having kind of node setting uh, into, a, into a somewhat final um, uh, uh, position. 
I can, you know, uh, lower the tolerance here a little bit more. And oops, five, that's not good, 0 0.5, like this. Um, and then things uh, really start to settle and, uh, and become stable. So I'm going to stop specializing. And of course, this is now a very, very big uh, uh, network. But what I can already see is actually, you know, these nodes here, they're really going to be the nodes that are kind of shared by the two. Um, but uh, before I'm kind of looking at, at anything more closely here, I think we should um, uh, filter this network. So we have 6,000 uh, different hashtags in, um, in, 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 this, uh, in this data set, and uh, I want to reduce that. For filtering, I'm going to go here to the right, select the filter panel, um, and then uh, simply use an attribute range here, and I'm going to stick with uh, a weighted degree, right? So here you can kind of play around with, um, with um, um, you know, different values to get this kind of to a level where you're, you know, kind of um, uh, comfortable with uh, uh, reading and, 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 you know, kind of really analyzing this network in, in uh, more detail. So now I've um, uh, selected 500 here as the cutoff, and this means that actually instead of having 6,000 um, uh, nodes, we're now kind of down to 215. I'm going to maybe make a bit more. Here again, maybe 400. Yeah, 274. Let's let's keep it uh, uh, like this. Um, you know, as always with with Gephi, this is something where you have to you know kind of wiggle around and you know try out different things. Um, use the software to to get to a level of analysis that um, gives you the kind of granularity and and readability that you that you desire. Um, okay, so now we have uh, uh, our our network here, and I'm just gonna go to preview up to the top. And uh, well, it's sometimes a bit slow, but here it is. And then have a look at this. Um, okay, so now here we have um, our our different nodes. Um, maybe to make things uh, still a bit more readable, I'm actually gonna go back and uh, also add some color to it. Just gonna use um, you know weighted degree again, and you can see well, um, yeah, get a, a, a view that's now a, kind of a little bit more. Um, uh, uh, yeah, colorful indeed. Um, in, in this in this in this context here, um, most things are actually in one way or another going to be connected to to uh, a lot of the others. So I actually don't think it makes a lot of sense to keep the edges here. So I'm just actually going to put them away to simply have all of my nodes, um, because the main thing here is basically how they appear on uh, on the horizontal axis. Um, to make it even nicer, I'm going to put the border color away, which kind of um, uh, very often interferes with, um, you know, the moment you put you put the node labels in there, you, um, uh, well, normally use black and the border color is black. So uh, for more readability, I'm going to yeah, uh, remove the border um, color. And um, now I'm simply going to look at the labels. Okay, so we have here on the left, uh, um, you know, Gamergate. Let's make the font a tiny bit smaller for maybe more read readability. We can zoom in then a bit. Yeah, so we have here on the left Gamergate. And indeed, we're gonna really find around here those tags now in this game, in this, in this combined data set that are really specific to the Gamergate hashtag. That means, you know, gaming, gamer, well, here's all this game stuff. Manga, anime, uh, not your shield, Anita Sarkeesian. Um, and here we're already kind of moving more into the into the middle, and we really see kind of the connection between those two data sets is um, you know feminism, feminist, anti-feminism, uh, women's rights, uh, you know, gender equality, and so forth. And now what we're gonna see is when we move to the right, we go more and more to subject matters. Um, like, for example, here, you know, uh, Black Lives Matter, pro-choice, and so forth, that are going to be, you know, these here, they still have some connection to the Gamergate um, um, a data set, but they become more and more specific to the social justice uh, hashtag. Uh, you know, justice here, peace, human rights, 
handmade, well, <laughs> I don't know what that means, Thanksgiving, be the change. So those are things that are actually now much less uh, relevant to the Gamergate um, um, uh, kind of semantic sphere. So this is what I meant with kind of a semantic continuum, right? Um, uh, to the left and to the right, uh, uh, the things that are specific to those two uh, hashtags, and then in the middle, the things that um, uh, connect them. And I think this is particularly interesting if you're looking at um, two hashtags, or you know, you could do more. Huh? You could do maybe three, maybe even four. Um, place, settle the nodes in like a rectangle, and then you would, you know, kind of um, uh, uh, see in the middle the, the the things that are shared between all four of them. Um, and then kind of between two, well, in, uh, on the on the uh, uh, on the lines. But um, I think two is probably the most um, the, the most readable. And, uh, and indeed, right, you, you get kind of um, um, an appreciation how those two issues relate. And as I said, it's kind of really interesting um, to look at um, subject matters that are kind of related, but potentially antagonistic. Right, so uh, for here, you know, Gamergate uh, and social justice, this is indeed the case. Um, if we wanted to make all of this uh, more readable, right, uh, uh, what we could do, for example, because here we have, uh, yeah, this whole um, um, really very dense zone, it's not very readable, is, is go back here um, and uh, use the label adjust algorithm. Um, and for this, I need a bit of uh, a, uh, I have to activate here the labels. The label adjust um, algorithm is basically a way of specialization that simply enhances readability. That stuff doesn't move too far away. I'm gonna do it like this. That should be fine. Again, this is really something you, you know, have to wiggle out, uh, wiggle around a bit with. Label adjust, just gonna run that here. Yeah, nice. And go back to preview. And suddenly, all of this is um, much more, much more readable. So, um, when analyzing, you know, you have to uh, watch out that the label adjust doesn't move things uh, around too much. But this is indeed, I think, a kind of an interesting way of um, looking at um, well these two combined uh, uh, data sets. Uh, and I hope uh, this is uh, useful to uh, your own research. Uh, enjoy, and uh, see you in the next video.